Welcome to Doc NYC. My name is Tom Powers. I'm the artistic director of the festival. Let me say some important thank yous. Thank you to our presenting sponsors, History Films, A&E Indie Films, and New York Magazine. To our major sponsors, Technicolor Postworks New York, Sundance Now, City, and the School of Visual Arts and to our fantastic Doc NYC staff and volunteers. This is David Bromberg. I'm uh, at the New York uh, the City Documentary Film Festival uh, at the School of Visual Arts. And this is the, the premiere of a film called David Bromberg, Unsung Treasure. And, and if my name doesn't mean anything to you, don't, don't worry about it. I have no idea who you are. Uh, this film is full of many great examples of great music. I have a uh, special uh, attachment uh, to this film and its director. Uh, I first met Beth Tony Cravant uh, when she uh, came as a student uh, in a class that I teach at uh, NYU's School of Continuing and Professional Studies. Um, it's, it's a fabulous festival, really love it, we love everything about it, and um, just really thrilled to be a part of it. And I want to thank everybody else for coming out. Um, it's um, you know it's just great to see you here and support and I hope you really all enjoy the film. And so uh, well, let me ask you a couple of questions. I'll ask the audience a couple questions. Let the audience say some questions. We can get the house lights up a little bit so we can see these uh, beautiful people. Um, Beth, how did you get into this story? What led you to make this film? Um, well, I was at the um, Levon Helm Ramble in Woodstock, and David was a, um, I guess it was a surprise guest there, and I saw him and I said, wow, he is amazing. And I said, well, where has he been all these years? And if I want to know where he's been, I figured there must be an audience out there who was asking the same questions. So that's how I started out. Connection. Peter, what was your reaction to uh, that coming to you with interest in making films? I had no idea that it was going to be anything like this. I had no idea what it was going to be. Um, I just thought it was neat, okay. There's, uh, this woman has won prizes and she wants to do a film about me. And uh, great, okay, let's see what happens. And uh, it's. Uh, Especially considering the subject matter, it's a wonderful film. <laughs> what, what stands out to you when you watch it? The you know, choices that Beth has made, and, uh, what are the impressions that you take away from the film? Well, I'll tell you the two things I like best about it. I, I love seeing Nancy in her 20s. <laughs> uh, she's so cute. And, um, and I wasn't, I haven't, since I stopped playing for 22 years, I'm trying to rebuild my technique. I wasn't always sure that I was as fluent as I was, on, uh, as I remembered myself being on the guitar. And uh, I, I could see myself being very fluent there. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I could do that. Uh, let's take uh, some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, raise your hand uh, if you've got one. Yeah, right over here. Contemporary music. There's a band called Olabel that I uh, that I really love um, because it's roots-based music, and that's what I you know what I like. Um, uh, Larry Campbell is doing some wonderful things. He's the he was uh, uh, and he was Levon's musical director. He, he, he led the band, and he's a very musical guy. And I'm sure there are others that will occur to me later. <laughs> What's uh, any any particular uh, future uh, album plans or musical plans other than? Question was uh, any future album plans? Well, to, uh, to be really frank about it, uh, it's very hard these days to do a professional record. Anyone on earth now can do one in their living room. Uh, but I, I, I did one of those actually, and that's the one that you know that was trying me one more time. It got nominated and all. Uh, but uh, the next one I want to do, I've been talking to Larry Campbell about producing it. Uh, the problem is um, the record companies, even the ones that still exist, and there's not a whole lot of them, um, they're not selling a whole lot of product. 
so they don't have a lot of money to finance a record. So Larry and I are trying to figure out, we, we know what we want to do, but we're trying to figure out a way to get it done. Uh, the, the record companies that are approachable these days, unless you're uh, Beyonce, who by the way, I think is great. Uh, you, uh, they, uh, they want you to present them with the finished product. They don't want to finance them. So, so it's a difficult. Uh, it, it's, it's a difficult thing. When I saw Beyonce in uh, that terrible movie Cadillac Records, I thought she was wonderful, and I thought that, uh, in spite of the fact that Etta James, who is one of my favorite singers, thought that she herself should have played herself, <laughs> it was a little delusional on Etta's. Uh, uh, part. Um, I thought Beyonce really studied Edda's recording of At Last, which was the, uh, uh, which is the Edda's biggest tune, um, and did a great version of it. So that right then and there, I became a Beyonce fan. And another artist who I now respect, who I I didn't think much of, is Christina Aguilera. She has tremendous technique, but I thought that. She used every lick she had in every song she did, and I got bored with it fast. And then I saw her at a, a, on television at a Grammy Awards show. It was the year that uh, um, uh, James Brown died, and she was selected to do the tribute to James. And she did It's a Man's World. And she didn't do any of that stuff that she did in the world. She just, she just sang the shit out of It's a Man's World. Uh, right here. Do you play the violin? The question was, do you play the violin? Very bad. I play, <laughs> I play a little country music and I try not to pick one up unless there's two other fiddlers playing to, to hide between. Uh, I can't go. Yeah, right in the middle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he was actually was there looking for bows, but I don't, I'm not sure if they consume that too. Professional musicians, especially of the caliber, Bill, Bill's caliber, they have what they want by now, generally. Um, when I opened my shop, I thought that I'd be selling to players at retail prices, but I used to sell to dealers at wholesale prices. It doesn't work that way. You, uh, uh, players uh, have to develop a relationship with the shop. So I actually had to begin selling very inexpensive violins, the best ones of which are made in China. So I had to learn all about those, which were not my knowledge. I was familiar with the older, fine violins. And uh, a few years ago, I finally got to the point where some of those students who started with me got to want better violins, and I could sell some of the things that I had on my shelves. Beth, I want to ask you a question about weaving together the different strands of uh, David's life. There's his music career, there's his, there's his work in, uh, uh, with violins, uh, there's his work uh, uh, kind of revitalizing the town. Talk to me about how you chose to uh, work with all those different themes. Well, those were three themes that, that stood out, and I felt they added um, complexity to the film, so it made a fullness to the film. And, um, you know, with that, I structured the story. I mean, I just really just wove it in and out to where it made the most sense so that um, an audience could really um, connect with it.